Again, Kuminga at 10 to New Orleans, uh, it's a real possibility that smoke is out there that he's slipping. And I would almost bet on him being in New Orleans more than Wagner if I had to pick between the two as like any kind of predictive. All right. Well, with that said, let's talk. I was planning on talking about Wagner here, but let's talk about Kuminga then. Um, is there any particular reason that he's slipping so much right now? I know we saw him coming into the G League as possibly earning, you know, becoming a top five pick. And he was thought of as being a top five pick for the majority of this year, even with all the issues in terms of the jump shot and uh, the ineffection. Uh, what's the word? ineffectiveness I think that's a word on defense at times yeah. um, this year but he's got that frame and and he's got all the like all the physical tools and he's got the potential to be a star in this league when it comes down to him possibly falling to 10 I mean is it a no-brainer is it a we take this guy right now that's what I could see happening in that front office um and I think I do think to an extent even if Wagner's loved at Sacramento at nine uh, there are people in there that would say the same thing at Kaminga at nine of just like, hey, if he's here, we take him. You know, I know he struggled on defense a lot. And he was really inefficient as a player. Uh, Matt and I got to see him uh, in, a, in a private workout down in Orlando in the beginning of June. And I'll tell you what, we walked in the gym, kids started working out. And one of the other guys in the gym uh, that Matt and I ran into, he looked right at me and said, that's what NBA stars are built like at 18. He said, that's how they're built right there. I mean, he's got a, a short torso, long legs, long arms, just one of the more physically impressive kids I've seen uh, in a long time, uh, at least in like a pre-draft workout, just just a huge, strong uh, specimen. And he's a high flyer. I think he can be a point forward a little bit, maybe more initiator than point because uh, he makes some questionable decisions with the ball. I know he was an inefficient shooter, but man, when he's hitting them, like it's it's really difficult to, to defend. He's got a high release point, smooth mechanics. He'll just need to clean up the decision making. Um, and again, at 9 10, I think you do get to a point where you just say, hey, I know we had plans, but now if he's here, we're taking him. So, what do you blame? I mean, is there anything to blame for his lack of? I mean, consistent shooting and defense at the G League level because, I mean, like I said, everybody held him in this high uh, standard and, and seeing him as being a possible star in this league, but he just – there was something missing in his G League play. Is there anything that you point to and say that's a problem but it can be fixed or, or anything like that? A lot of it was not basketball-related. Um, a lot of it has had to do with – you know, his his kind of camp, his family, his crew, whatever word people want to use uh, in the media. There have been some questions just kind of how they handled maybe working with some teams, maybe working with some people in high school um, relationships, you know, who can be trusted, all this stuff. It's I'll, I'll just say this. While we were in the gym with them, I thoroughly enjoyed talking to Jonathan. I thought he was a great kid. Uh, him as an individual, he was a pleasure to speak with, pleasure to be around. We saw him a couple of days later, walked right up to both of us. It like said, hey, knew our names again. Like again, I struggle with names after two days. I have people I should know their name. He should have no reason to know my name and walked right up to me and knew exactly. Like we just you know picked up conversation. Thought he was a really good kid. So if he does slip again, like it wouldn't shock me if he if he does. But the quote reasons, if you will, if it's negative against him, I don't understand. If it's a positive because you have somebody else, you're just like we just think this kid is the truth and we're gonna take him then I understand, you know, with Scotty Barnes, he is a, he is a top notch kid. He is a tremendous kid. Uh, and again, he's got the physical frame, you know, anybody wants in a prospect. So I can understand, Hey, we're just taking Scotty Barnes. I think book nights an easy 20 points per game guy in the NBA in a couple of years. Great. Then we're just going to take book night because of his scoring upside. Mitchell to, to golden state. We need a guy who can play right now. So, you know, it, those reasons, it's not even so much like anti Kaminga. It's, we know what we really, really want, and this player has it, so we're going to take him, and that just by default could push him. And, and not to get stuck on Kaminga, because obviously we're talking about the Pelicans draft, but you'd think given the place that the Magic are in, you they they take that shot on Kaminga at least at eight, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't you presume that? Yeah, so this is where Matt and I have conversations in our mock draft, You know, both from a perspective of what would you do at eight, and what do we think will happen at eight? I'm not afraid to take Barnes and Kuminga. You give me two 
six, eight, 18 year olds, you know, 19 year olds, hey, we'll figure it out because one of them's going to pan out. And if they both pan out, who doesn't like athletic, versatile forwards who can handle the ball and, and score? I mean, you right. give me a whole roster full of those. So I'm of the opinion, hey, just go ahead and give me both of them. Um, I also believe that Orlando likes Moody a lot. And again, you add Barnes' versatility as a passer and a defender, and then you add Moody's length shooting in defense. I mean, if they both click, that's a lethal combo as well. So I do think that eight is, again, eight is that swing pick where, you know, if we get it right in our mock draft and we predict what happens, I'm feeling pretty good. Of like, okay, we know what's going to happen. If somebody different goes, I think it's just like a complete domino effect all the way through the rest of the first round of just, all right, yeah, we have no idea anymore. <laughs> well, let's let's say that Kuminga falls to 10 and, and the Pels select him. There's a lot of pressure for the Pelicans to be good like right away next year. And especially after the hiring of, of Willie Green today, uh, a lot of people are happy about that, especially given his history of building relationships with players and, and all of that. Uh, some people have said, I want Davion Mitchell because he's going to contribute right away. Well, he's an undersized guard and he didn't really do a whole lot until the latter half of this last year. So, but then you look at Kaminga, who is, I, I think it's fair to say that he's expected to be a project. Correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong there, mm -hmm. but is is it too much of a swing for the fences to go for a Kaminga, would you say, for, for the Pelicans at 10? I think because he's a top five, six talent, if he's there at 10, I don't think it's too much of a swing for a fence. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because, like, what I, what I learned in my time, you know, with an NBA team is, like, your organizational timeline is everything. And, yes, New Orleans does want to win now. They want to go to the playoffs right now. But if you're if you're honest with yourself, do we think that the Pelicans can go to the Western Conference Finals next season? Okay, and that's not even me trying to be any kind of way. But when you look <laughs> in the mirror, when you look in the mirror and say, "I don't know if that's you know feasible," is that attainable? I think that alters your draft, or maybe even drives your draft strategy. Because a guy like Kispert, I think the conversation at that point would be Kuminga or Kispert. And if you're right there. Like if you're the Warriors 14, you know, you've got a Duarte or like an Isaiah Jackson on the board. Hey, we're trying to win in the next two seasons. Like we're going to pick the guy who can play right now. I don't know if the Pelicans are in that place, which is why I think if Kamingo's on the board, um, I think you just take him and say, hey, like we're, we're our roster is kind of young anyway, which is a good thing because we can grow together. Um, that That's where I think you really had to look in the mirror and just kind of be like, all right, where are we? as far as like a legitimate feasible timeline and then that will affect your picks.